Hey, howdy folks. Let's take a look at a little bandpass filter. This is a single op amp bandpass filter. And when you look at the outputs, you'll see why sometimes you want to use this kind of circuit topology and other times why it wouldn't be such a good idea. In my previous examples, I've showed you how to set up a schematic so they can drive both PCB functional simulation as well as PCB layout. And I haven't gotten too elaborate in my setup. The last time we did this, we just set up a transient analysis. But now let's look at how we can run transient analysis and uh, frequency analysis at the same time. So in this case, what I've done is I've set up my sine wave. You can see it here. Um, small amplitude input sine wave, relatively high frequency. And um, I've also set up my DC voltage, my frequency, uh, magnitude, and phase. And so now I have a waveform input that specifies both my time domain, my DC domain, and my frequency domain. So now I'm in good shape where I can run multiple simulations at the same time. So let me show you how to do that. So we hit simulations. In this case, I'm not going to run a DC analysis. You can see I've got my time domain analysis set up. And I've also got my frequency um, domain analysis set up. So I'm going to start at 10 hertz. I'm going to run it up to 100k hertz. I'm going to have 10 points per decade. And I'm going to run both of these, the, the transient analysis and the frequency analysis at the same time. And the fact is, I can run a parametric sweep at the same time if I wanted to. I can run as many different analyses as I want um, for the same simulation run. And one of the other points that, you know, I haven't really made a big deal out of is I can have as many different experiments. So an experiment is a collection of analysis. So when you have multiple analysis set up, you might want to, you know, stick that under a different name like multi-analysis or something like that. So let's go ahead and type that in. multi uh analysis. And so I'm going to have multiple simulation runs set up under this new experiment file. So we're going to go ahead and run the simulation right now. As you can see the output waveforms popped up. Um, maybe I can show you real quickly before the waveform shows up. What's going on here? My experiment file. So my single run experiment was just experiment one. My multi-analysis, which you can tell by this icon, is the one that's active. It's now been labeled here. So later on, if I want to go back and just switch to my single analysis run, I can just click on this, make it active, run it. I don't have to reset it up. I can have as many different simulation experiment files set up as I want and run them all at the same time. Um, and obviously, the waveform DX Designer, the all of the windows are operational while the simulator is running. And here comes easy way for hyperlinks. So the first thing you'll notice is that it's categorized my output, my frequency analysis called AC, and my transient analysis goes in the transient bucket. So I pick which um, waveforms I'm interested in. In this case, let's go ahead and take a look at um, signal out. So there's my magnitude expressed in terms of dBs. There's my phase, and um, Let's do a quick an, a, a quick analysis of the waveform. So let's take a look in the frequency domain, and we've got a bandpass capability built right in. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And what this is going to do is it's going to show me the frequencies that are 3 dB away from the the maximum frequency. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. And now, if I wanted to, I can use a cursor. There's multiple ways to figure this out. And I can see my top value is 98.8. And then when I'm down 3 dB, you know, 95.8, 95.8 again. And it's telling me exactly which frequency this is happening at. So um, this is a very simple way to quickly go through. So F low is 1.49 kilohertz. F high is 1.79 kilohertz. Now, as I said earlier, when we first started this out, it's real simple why maybe this isn't the ideal bandpass filter because it's a point, it's not a plateau. So this kind of circuit topology has um, uses, not, not necessarily always, 
Before we walk away from this, why don't we take a look at different ways that you can represent the frequency analysis. So let's take a look at it as a Smith chart. And now let's take a look at it as a polar chart. And then let's say I, you know, I don't like the color green. I'm, I'm, I don't see green so well. So um, down to the properties. Let me go ahead and change that color uh, to pink. I see pink real well. You know, I'm gonna thicken up that line. So, boom. So you can see that there are, you know, easy way for hyperlinks has so much functionality built in. It's not hard to use. The the thing is that most people don't realize the functionality is there and they never get around to using it. But the capabilities are built in. Um, it's it's very nice to be able to use. And we've just gone through and we've looked at a frequency analysis. And I suppose I should just validate for a moment that the transient analysis is still active for you. Since that's what I was planning on doing. So signal out signal in let's tack them together you can see this is a very high gain bandpass filter and there we have it we have a real simple design we've run uh, both transient analysis frequency analysis at the same time and we set it up very quickly very easily through uh, DX designer And we didn't corrupt our schematic with a bunch of probes, a bunch of simulation sources, so that this th this circuit is ready to go to PCB layout. And any changes we might have made in here from the function analysis side, tuning our values, turn tuning our tolerances, whatever we needed to do, would have been immediately passed to through to PCB layout. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.